equation 4.4. So this is a probability of having um, the probability of having a state S uh, with this energy, H bar omega divided by tau. And this is the total, right? So it's the partition function. We calculated the partition function. It's one over one minus exponent minus h bar omega divided by tau. So putting everything together, if we want to get the expectation value of the number of uh, photons in state S, it's going to be, we're just using the definition of the expectation value here of the mean. So from S equals zero to infinity of F uh, probability of S. This is what you did on your exam. And we have the, the probability of S. So is going to be exponent s h bar omega divided by tau divided by the partition function. So the partition function doesn't depend on the on the number of phonons. So we can move it outside. We can put it over here. Uh, let's call it inverse Z. Um, this equation Four point five, and Z is just this stuff. So we can rewrite the whole thing as one minus E to the negative beta. Sum. from s equals zero to infinity, and then s e to the negative s beta. And remember that beta was, um, I guess, h bar omega divided by tau. Okay, so, Let's take a look at this equation. If we let u be equal to negative s beta, then derivative with respect to beta of e to the negative s beta, which is this thing that we have over there, is going to be derivative of e to the u with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to 
beta. So this is just the chain rule, I mean the product rule, uh, sorry, the chain rule, too many rules. This is E to the U, the derivative with respect to beta of negative S beta. So this is just E to the U times negative S. Um, so this is minus S E to the minus S beta, right? That was U. So the negative derivative of E to the negative SB with respect to beta is S E to the minus S beta, which is this guy over here. So we can place it. It's gonna be just negative derivative of E to the negative S beta respect to beta. And of the derivatives, the derivative is going to act on each one so we can take it out. So it will be derivative with respect to beta of the sum, I'm gonna put the stuff in square brackets because the whole thing is negative. The derivative with respect to beta and then the sum over all the infinite number of states e to the negative s beta. And we had already calculated this one and last time, oops, this is the, the partition function. So partition function, I guess I erased it, but is one minus e, uh, the negative s b the inverse mm. right so over here the partition function is should be down here or it's dividing here is the uh, numerator so it's negative i mean the inverse negative one all right, so now U is gonna be one minus E to the negative beta, which is what we have over here and here. So the derivative with respect to u of u to the negative one, which is this dude over here, That's the, the derivative, this one, um, with the, the chain rule. So that's gonna be um, put it over here. Mm. Where did I have? I 
guess I'm going to include the negative. So it's negative, and then this negative becomes a positive. This is negative two. Then is the derivative with respect to beta of one plus e to the negative beta. Oh no, I see. Um, this was negative. And um, I graphed the additional negative and I put, put it in here. Okay. So that whole thing is going to be negative one minus e to the negative beta, negative two e to the negative beta. So then we can put it over here. I'm running out of chalk over here. negative, they become positive, both of them. And so this thing is going to be Right, so now we can get rid of this one with one of these ones. So let's rewrite it over here. It's gonna be e to the negative beta. And this is just this thing. So if we divide this one by e to the negative beta, and this one by the same, so we're just multiplying times one, we get that the expectation value of the number of photons in state S is um, uh, wait, it should be one. One over e to the beta positive minus one. So I'm gonna rewrite this one, this one over here, just to have more space. Uh, this is, it has a box around it in the book. I think it does. It is equation 4.6. Question. Yes, that's correct. That is exactly correct. So this is called the, Pl the Planck distribution. Okay, it's um, 
like the Boltzmann distribution is kind of foundational in thermodynamics. And if you look at it, it's not actually a distribution. It's just the expectation value. But if you plot it you know, on this axis, H bar omega divided by tau, you will get um, something that looks like a distribution. So, in the low temperature limit, so as tau goes to zero, tau temperature is much smaller than h bar omega. So in that case, the expectation value of the number of photons is um, E, and then you have some h bar omega over here over tau, minus one. This tau goes to zero, so this thing uh, goes to infinity. E to the infinity, infinity, minus one, still infinity. One over infinity, zero. Okay, so tell me what, what does this mean? What does this mean? So, so there, there might be, Right, so this, this is the energy, this is the temperature, right? So uh, the, you're correct that there are no photons. Why would you expect that to be the case? Right? So let's think about a particular h bar omega, so particular energy. Um, let's say that, I don't know, this is visible, visible light. If you have something that is really cold, let's say, um, well, I was gonna make a joke, Houston. Um, bad joke, sorry. Do you expect the number, uh, how many photons would you expect of that energy? And the answer is zero, right? Uh, if the temperature is really low, then the most of the photons are gonna be emitted in really long wavelength, so low frequency. Um, uh, photons, so probably remember, you know, this one, the, um, what's the distribution called? Well, I guess it is a black body radiation. Okay, so if it's really cold, it is not going to emit photons. In the high temperature, limit, so temperature goes to infinity. Temperature is much greater than h bar omega. In that case, um, we have one over e to the h bar divided by tau minus one. If we just put uh, infinity over here, then this is gonna be something divided by infinity. Uh, it's gonna be zero. So it's gonna be e to the zero minus one. 
this is one. One minus one is zero, so this will be one divided by zero. And I think that it's against the rules of math. So you cannot uh, use the same technique. This is uh, an important trick that you should remember. It's very useful. The power series expansion of the exponential function. It is one plus uh, x divided by one factorial plus x squared divided by two factorial plus da da da. So um, if theta goes to infinity, beta goes to zero. And so then this x, you know, this will be beta. Uh, it's really small. If it's really small, then these terms are going to be you know, more and more negligible. Because uh, x is a very small number. And so e to the x, when x is small, it's approximately equal to one plus x. Okay, so if we use that one, then we get one divided by, so we get the exponent, it's gonna be one minus um, h bar omega plus, sorry, h bar omega uh, over tau. And then we get the negative one. So we can get rid of the ones. And so we just get you know, one over h bar omega. So that's tau over h bar omega. All right, so in the high temperature limit, uh, this is going to be of a constant. So here's another really cool thing. In the high temperature limit, we got the expectation value of S. So if we multiply this times h bar omega, which is the energy, we're going to get that's equal to the expectation value of the energy. Okay, so in the high temperature limit, it's gonna be tau divided by h bar omega times h bar omega. That's the expectation value of the energy. This h bar omega go away. And we end up with equation um, 4.8. Okay, this is kind of cool. The temperature, in the high temperature limit at least, is the expectation, is the average energy. And that's what we had kind of assumed before, but now we can, we can prove it. If you go to really low temperatures, it's a little bit more difficult to define temperature. But you know, for all practical purposes, the temperature is the average energy. Okay, um, the other thing that is important to notice about this is that that high, I put bars above my H now, it's a high temperature. In the low temperature, the expectation value of S was zero. 
the expectation value is different. This is, this is fine because the number of photons is not conserved. Okay, it's not like energy. If you have a cavity to your reservoir and you increase the temperature of the reservoir, the number of photons inside the cavity is going to increase to maintain thermodynamic equilibrium with the reservoir. And it can create as many photons as it needs. That's fine. So energy is conserved. Entropy always increases. Photons can be created and destroyed. We don't care about photons. They're not that special. All right, so So now consider uh, is the same case. We have our cavity, I guess in two dimensions, looks like this. So this is the system and this is the reservoir. Oh, the reservoir. Um, what we're going to add is that the walls of the cavity uh, are conductive. It's a conductive material. Uh, the cavity has a, it's a, it's a, it's a box, a cube, and the side of the cube is uh, L, the length. So in this box, uh, we can accommodate an infinite number of electromagnetic waves. So the, the photons, the electromagnetic waves that have really low energy, they're gonna look you know, kind of like that. And then if you put more energy in there, they're gonna look kind of like that. And if you think about it, well, the more energetic the photon is, the electromagnetic wave, the shorter its frequency. There is no limit to how high the frequency can go, right? You can have, you know, as many, um, periods. Um, so there is no limit to how energetic a photon can be in the universe or in the box. Um, I guess in practice, gamma rays are the most energetic things. Uh, but in, in principle, there's nothing uh, that precludes you from having photons that have more energy than that. Okay, so not all the modes, so these modes are available you know, in the box. Not all of them are going to be occupied, just like in the universe, we don't see uh, photons of every possible frequency. They just go up to some limit. So, the charge inside of this cavity, there's nothing in there, you know, it's just a cavity. So the charge is zero. The, the charge enclosed. So um, Gauss's law 
tells you that the divergence of the electric field is equal to rho, which is the charge density enclosed, divided by E naught, which is the uh, permittivity of free space. Here, because there's no charge enclosed, it's a cavity and it's empty, this is equal to zero. Okay. So uh, if you have taken um, physics, we over here, 4341, which is uh, ENM, then you have seen this. Now, uh, if you haven't, then maybe you have not seen this, but you have seen the integral, um, the integral form, which says that the electric flux is equal to the surface area, I mean, surface integral of the electric field dot uh, da, where a is the infinitesimal element, area element. So these two uh, forms are, uh, they say the same thing. This is the differential form, this is the integral form. So you do not need to know these uh, for this class, but we're going to define a few things so that you can understand this derivation. Have you seen this guy before? The inver inverted triangle. What is it? What is it? Yeah. So this dude is called Del or it's, or Nabla. Um, it looks like a Greek letter, but it's not. It's some made up Greek letter. So it stands for. Hmm. Um, Derivative with respect to x in the i direction plus derivative with respect to y in the j direction plus derivative with respect to z in the k direction. Okay, and uh, the electric field is also a vector. So it's going to have a component in x in the i direction a component in y in the j direction and a component in uh, z in the k direction. And over here, we're just taking the dot product of this one and this one. So taken together, we just put the e x over here. And because it's a dot product, we get rid of the directions. So this e x e y e z. Um, well, this is now the divergence of the electric field, and this is equal to zero in this particular case because there is no charge enclosed. Okay, so this is equation. Uh, 4.10. Mm. So we have a, a boundary condition. We are told that the walls are conductive. If the walls are conductive, that means that the charges are free to move. And if there is an electric field, you know, any electric field, the charges are going to move because of that, they're gonna feel a force. And so they're gonna move until the net force is zero, net force on them. And when that happens, the electric field is gonna be zero. Uh, so the electric field in the direction parallel to the plane, um, the six planes is zero. Okay, so, Mm 
yeah, x, y, and z. So we're going to have a plane. Uh, if y y equals zero, y equals l, z equals zero, or z equals l. Um, so it will be the y equals zero is going to be over here. And it's going to be the plane closest to you um, that is parallel to the board. And then the one on L is the plane that is, or I guess the side of the cube that is farther from you, also parallel to the board. And then for uh, Z, you will have um, the bottom and the top, and so on. You, you're going to have six of. Um, of these planes you know the sides of the of the cube so and this is this one v, x l v and this one is going to be x y zero and x, y, l. OK, so as I mentioned, this one over here is the x, um, sorry, x, z plane. This one is the, all these two, x, y plane. And you control it with z. Okay, so what we, what this means is that the field that is parallel to those planes is equal to zero. In this case, in this other case, it's gonna be the electric field in X equals the electric field in Y equals zero. Okay, so that is the, the, the constraint that the conductivity, perfect conductivity of the material is imposing on us. So we are not going to derive equation 4.9 but we're going to look at it. Mm, I think I'm gonna need more space. So it says that the electric field in X is initial electric field in X sine omega t, then we have cosine uh, kxx sine kyy sine kzz. And I'm using uh, k equals okay x, but it's the same for all of them. Uh, Nx pi over L. So k is called the wave number. Uh, it's just to write it a little bit more compactly. Okay, so the equations look the same for all of them. You just have a, a term that is being uh, permutated. Uh, so this is sine omega t. This is sine, 
wait, this is going to be, yes, sine k x x, and this one is going to be a cosine k y y, and the sine k z z. And then the magnetic field in Z sine omega T is going to be sine. This is going to be sine. And this is going to be cosine. Okay. So this part over here. If you look at it, it's a constant. Well, they are constant. So this is the amplitude of the wave. I'm sorry. Amplitude. And then this part over here depends only on the time. So this is the uh, temporal part. And the rest is the spatial part. Okay, so this part depends only on the time. This part depends on the position, x, y, and z. Okay, so. What I'm gonna do, I want to take the divergence of these of these equations. So the divergence um, equals zero, and as I mentioned, it's the derivative of x with uh, electric field in the x direction with respect to x so the derivative of the electric field in the y direction with respect to y and so on i guess there's only one more so um i guess i can skip the algebra but so if we take the derivative of ex it's going to be this guy. Oh, by the way, this whole thing comes from the, it's a solution to the wave equation. So if we take the derivative with respect to s, x of this thing, right, uh, we don't have to worry about these parts. It's, we can worry about just the amplitude and the temporal part. What you're going to end up with is a derivative of the electric field in the x direction with respect to x is negative e x zero x naught k x and then this cosine is going to become a sine so sine kx uh, x and then the other two terms so if you take the derivative of y with respect to y it's going to look uh, actually very similar uh, all the terms over here are going to be signs. Kxx, kyy, kzz. Um, the only difference is that this is going to be y not. This is going to be y not. Okay. So we write the whole thing the temporal part, I mean, the, um, 
the spatial time. The divergence is going to be negative e x naught k x And then you have the, the signs that whole thing is equal to zero. Okay, so how can you make it? You know, how can you make this whole thing be equal to zero? Well, this in general is equal to zero. So you need to make this part equal to zero. So this is going to be E. X naught and x pi divided by L, which is the kx. Well, zero. Um, <clears throat> we can factorize the pi divided by L. And then you know, we move it to this side, multiplied by zero is zero. So this is just gonna be mm, equal to if you use the dot product notation, it's going to be equal to E naught vector. So it's going to be this vector in the i direction plus this vector in the j direction plus this vector in the k direction dot n, um, nx in the i direction, and y in the j direction, and z in the k direction, and that's equal to zero. This is uh, equation 4.11. That's it's what we're going to look at. So let me write it over here. So E not the vector, E x in the i direction, E y in the j direction, E z in the k direction, and then n and x and y and n z. So notice. I think I can, yeah. Notice that um, we need a few more things for this equation to actually hold. Okay, this is the dot product. So if you know, one possibility for this to be true but this is equal to zero. Is nx 
in the i direction plus uh, zero in the j direction plus zero in the k direction with the electric field in x equal to zero. Okay, so this is one uh, option that will satisfy this equation. Um, you could also have zero in I, N Y in J and zero in K. So this is the N vector. Uh, if E Y naught is equal to zero and you guessed it, zero in J and N Z in K with E Z naught equal to zero. Okay, so what it tells you is that um, so the N, if you were, if this wave is moving, is the direction in which the wave it is is getting displaced. Uh, over here we have a standing wave because it's it's inside of a box. But this is the i direction. Um, Imagine that you have the walls over here and over here. So this is I, um, J, and K. This is going to look like this. Yeah. And this is the, the wave is over here. Okay, so this is, the, this is the direction NX over here. And you can have electric fields in X and in, sorry, in Y and in Z, but not in, in I for the equation to be satisfied. The other way, to do it is if the equation looks like, if the wave looks like this. Okay. So this is I, J, and K. So the physical meaning n is the direction in which the wave is propagating and e is the magnetic field so what this tells you is that when the wave it's pro the electromagnetic wave is propagating in this direction its electric field is oscillating either in y or in z but it is not oscillating in I, okay? So these are transverse modes. Longitudinal modes is like sound waves. You, know, you push it and then, uh, you know, these atoms over here, they are gonna push the atoms over here and they're gonna push the atoms over here. And so you have a wave that is propagating like this in the direction of, of the propagation. Another way to do it which is what a magnetic and electromagnetic wave does. Also what a, uh, the wave, if you go to the, uh, to, uh, to the stadium, you know, like a soccer game, uh, they, they do the wave, right? They move their hands up and down. So the hands are moving up or down and the wave is propagating across the stadium or around the stadium. 
So it is a transverse wave. The direction, it, the, the direction of motion is orthogonal to the direction of uh, uh, propagation. Okay. So electromagnetic like, okay, waves 101. <clears throat> I'm going to um, yeah. So if you I don't know why I have so many alarms. So the uh, wave equation is this one. So this is a Laplacian, it's just the derivative with respect to X, you know, blah, blah, blah. You do it twice because it's squared. So it's the second derivative of the X component of the electric field with respect to X. And then you also have it with respect to Y, with respect to Z. And you have this part which interacts with the uh, temporal part, this c squared, you know, this, this is general for any wave. Uh, in the case of electromagnetic waves, uh, c is the, the speed of light. c is the speed of propagation of the wave. So what it's important to get from that you can put your so they do it for E, X. Well, they don't really do it in the book, but uh, they tell you. This will be equation 4.12. What it's important to get from that is that Uh, C square K squared equals omega. Uh, and if you put in the um, N pi divided by L, then this is C squared I squared divided by L squared and X squared plus N Y squared plus n c squared equals, I'm sorry, this should be squared. Omega squared. So c squared pi squared um, times this thing equals omega squared l squared. And this is equation 4.13 and what you end up with, so this is a well-known relationship. You don't really need to, to derive it. You can find it on Wikipedia. Um, so it tells you that the speed of light is the frequency of the wave uh, divided by the, by the wave number which is a constant. So the frequency of each of these different ends is gonna be C, N pi 
divided by L. This one is 4.15. Okay, so what we're gonna do next time is The total energy is, uh, you will think, the sum over all the possible frequencies n of the expectation value of the energy for that, uh, for that n. Uh, actually, it is twice that number because for every direction of propagation, we have two modes that have the same energy, um, the transverse modes. So one is like this, and the other one is like this. And this is going to be equal to 2. Uh, H bar omega n divided by um, exponent of H bar omega n divided by tau minus one. So we summed over uh, S to get the expectation value of the number of photons that we're going to have of each frequency or of each energy. And now what we're going to do is to sum over all energy to get the total energy. Okay. And um, from that, we're going to. Get the black body radiation. All right, so questions? Comments? I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>